In the 1980s, when home computers came popular in England, I went and did some lessons and I learned how to use computers to speed up processes on the farm, spreadsheets and databases, I just love them. And then my brother in America introduced me to live video. It was very pixelated, it was very poor, but I saw him holding my newborn nephew in his arms and I just fell in love with the internet. It was a miracle, I was hooped. But we still only had dial-up, it was very, very slow. So we formed a group and in 2003, working with our local university, we built a wireless mesh network. You can see him putting the antennas on the things. That's a digital notice board in our post office. And for a while, it was enough to do what we wanted. We set up a computer club in the village, the old-fashioned computers there. We did a village website. Everybody joined and learned how to use the internet, and we became a, a digital village. And then, online video arrived. Somebody bright invented YouTube, and our little network couldn't cope anymore. The university put a bit of extra feed in to our mesh network, and we streamed Prince William getting married in our village hall. This is how we transmitted it with antennas. That's the one on my barn silo. And the apple's there to remind me to tell you this story. It's a quote from George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw said, if I have an apple and you have an apple and we exchange apples, we each have one apple. But if I have an idea and you have an idea and we exchange those, we each have two ideas. So working together with other groups like ours throughout the country, we started getting ideas. That was the first A. Now I've got to draw a circle on here. And then I'll explain this later for you. I'm very glad I remembered to do that. Right, we had a retired uh, telecom professor uh, who retired from the university that we were working with. And he came up with a really good plan. We all fed our ideas into this plan. And he was sort of the genius, the man with vision behind it. Just like the man who moved in and said, we have to get some water, set off that JFDI process. This man set off the second JFDI process. His plan was technically brilliant. And theoretically, we should have got government funding, but we didn't get it. So what we had to do was come up with another cunning plan to raise the money ourselves, which is what we did. And we raised the money from our community with community shares. So the idea was that everybody raised the money and then they had to commit to doing the work and actually building this network themselves. It was called Broadband for the Rural North. As an experiment in 2009, we laid the, and lit the first rural fibre to the home, to the house on the picture that was built in 19, uh, 1693. Uh, it was 1.2 kilometres. We did it in two days. It was very successful. It was easy. It wasn't rocket science. It was brilliant. We got these sort of ideas from old photographs of our village. That was when they were digging electric into the village. So barn came into being, we had banners, and we put them all over the place to encourage people, and it did encourage people. So here are some slides showing a group of these people. We all met together on the day of the spades. You'll hear a, a bit more about the spades. I've got spades around my neck, I've got a spade there. Each success led to more people joining the group. That's about the English weather, and those are the conditions we were digging in. They were digging for their gigabits, gold from the ether. Each success led to more people joining and more villages joining our tribe and digging. We figured out that it was cheaper to go across the fields than dig up the roads, and so we went across the fields. And so that is George, who happens to be crippled and cannot walk, but he can drive a digger. And so now we come to the film, and I'll talk you through the film. I love it when technology actually works. So these are the sort of speeds we could get if we were really, really lucky. And this is halfway through our project, and these are the sort of speeds we can get. 
At that time, we had a 1,000 properties connected, all snaking out, all the ducks being laid throughout our communities. And that's one of our route walking meetings where everybody... Oh, that's Walter, our one millionth shareholder. Those are our banners. And the children with the spades. So that was the day of the spades. And the farmers doing most of the digging. Laying the duck safely into the trench. That's the mole plough in action. That's the fastest way to do it. And those are the farmers doing it with multiple cores of duct. These are the villagers blowing the fibre through the ducks. And as you can see, they're all uh, in the silver years. And we drink lots of tea and eat lots of cake. <laughs> we also have a trailer now instead of the scaffolding that kept getting blown over to protect us when we're working. These are the splices. And that's the fibre. That's the process. That's one of our cabinets. There's a happy punter. <laughs> and the speed tests that all vary depending on your equipment. And this is one of our schools. We've got lots of schools. All our villages now, all the schools come on and get the service a lot cheaper uh, than they could before. And there's actually talk now of letting all the schools have a free connection because we don't actually want to make a profit as such. We have to make more money than we need, but then it goes back into the community. So these are the sort of conditions we're digging in. You can't actually see the end one, but that's the mole plough. That's a good trench, and that's some of the alluvial plains that we had to dig through. No terrain can beat us. Uh, this is JFDI again. Jane Flipping did it. Jane on the left is 90 years old, and she dug through her garden with the help of Rachel. The community digging, going under walls, roads, hedges with a mole, blowing the fibre through the duct with an audience of sheep or cows usually, and the English weather. We've done 2,000 kilometres of digging. The, the farmers and the people have dug 2,000 kilometres. We've connected 2,000 customers. And every time we get fibre to a new community, we award them a spade, reflecting our low-cost culture. They get a plastic spade, which we put in a prominent position in their village. Families turn out to dig. You may have noticed that many of our people are um, retired. Age is not a limit, it's often an advantage, and they become community champions. And if they become a community champion, and they're a man, they get a wooden spade with JFDI on. And if they're a lady, they get a silver spade. We realised our achievements were really important, so what we do is we have what's called showtel days, and at the showtel days, people come, often hundreds of people come, and learn how we did it, and we take them on guided tours, we show them all the equipment we use, we help them with raising the money and our ethos. We even had Prince Charles came to visit us, and he actually fused the thousandth customer's pigtail. So he came to see what we were about, and what we want to do is, is share this knowledge. The nephew, that I, that I thought that slide had gone actually, the nephew who I saw as a newborn baby in, a, in 15 years previously came to stay with me for a week, so we took him out fusing, we let him do the fusing, and that was his first enclosure, his first bullet that he, that he did. I got fibre to my farm uh, uh, in 2014, in July, and so these are the speed tests that I can do on my computer which I think is, is pretty amazing. My farm's two kilometres up a, a mountainside, and we dug it from the main core to my farm. And so now I've got the best broadband in the world. Um, it's been a really, really eventful journey, and... I know it's been scary on the way, but we've really enjoyed it. All of us have really enjoyed it. It's been amazing to see what our community has stood up and done. You see the grannies in the trenches and the granddads, day after day, getting wet, 
quite a lot of us got trench foot in the first year because the weather was so awful. So my gift to you, and you can come and talk to me later if you want more technical information, but my gift to you is the four A's. So I should have written three more A's on there, so I'll do them now. They should have happened during the thing. So what we've got, and this can be applied to anything you're bothered about. I was bothered about getting broadband. You might be bothered about getting clean air or saving the whales. So the first A is the first group that got going, the, the group with a leader of vision. And we were passionate about what we wanted to do. The second group are the adopters, the people who turned out with the spades. They were ready to follow. They were ready to be led. They wanted help with their, to get the broadband, but they didn't want to lead it. They were the adopters. The next group that we had to get were the apathetic. It's not a very good word for them, because it, it sounds like they're a bit wimpy. It's, it's not that they're wimpy, it's just that they're not that bothered about broadband. They would like it, but they don't want to put a terrific lot of effort into it because they're too busy doing other things in their lives, uh, saving whales or clean air or whatever. And then the final group are the aunties. These are the ones who don't want you to succeed. And usually it's bureaucracy or people with vested interests, like in our case, the telecoms companies, who want to protect their copper assets. So we start off with the activists. The activists have to inspire the adopters, and then they get the strength in numbers as the tribe grows. The adopters can inspire the apathetic, but the antis can't, the activists can't inspire the apathetic. If, if, if I went to an apathetic person, they'd slam the door in my face because I would be too much in their space and too passionate. So you've got to inspire the adopters who have a more gentle, calm approach, and the adopters will inspire the apathetic people for you. We've also got to protect the apathetic people with lots of input from the adopters to protect them from the antis who say, oh, it can't be done. We had the head of Openreach, which is British Telecom, came to our area and said, with the best will in the world, we cannot do this. This rural area is too sparse. We cannot bring you internet. And so we've just proved them wrong. But we've got to protect these from hearing words like that by saying, yes, we can. Yes, we can. We just flipping do it. So. The four A's are my gift, and they can be applied to absolutely anything you want to do. So instead of an apple, I've given you an idea. Thank you.